slightly. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Barking Town Hall. Welcome to Radio Ballads. Um, I'm not going to speak very much. There's a lot of... Um, what's great is there are so many familiar faces in this room, and a lot of you were celebrating on Wednesday night, so I'm not going to repeat anything that I said then. Uh, this is really a moment to celebrate the amazing project that is Radio Ballads. Um, it's uh, a time to celebrate the amazing local partners we have in the borough. So many people are here today, Barking and Dagenham Youth Dance, um, Green Shoes Arts, and so many other partners. It's also a time to just celebrate in what is, I guess, the seat of power, you know? Uh, we're here in the chamber where decisions get made about people's lives, about how we live together as a community. And I think it's really important that we've occupied this space today with your artworks and that you're all here. And I hope you feel absolutely comfortable. If anyone wants to take any of the seats here, for example, <laughs> they're yours to take. And then show Ned, our assistant curator, is amazing and she has really made a lot of this happen today so if you want to if you want to just say a little bit about new town culture uh, yeah. i don't think i can reach the mic actually so i'm going to shout <laughs> cool, brilliant, thank you. um yeah so just marika should really be speaking today but i'm just going to say a really big thank you on behalf of new town culture to amar lizzie and layla for all the really hard work and care <laughs> And all the artists and participants, the films are absolutely amazing and beautiful, and I really hope you all get a chance to have a look at them after, after the performances are over. Um, Newtown Culture is really unique. It's based in this uh, borough, like Anne-Marie's just said, and we're based in the, the culture team and the social care team. And really, Newtown Culture is just kind of trying to champion creativity within the social care sphere and trying to encourage a lot of our social care workers to really think creatively about when they're working with their young people and their service users. Um, and Radio Ballas has been brilliant at giving us a platform and for exploring that as well. So yeah, I just want to say a really big thank you uh, to everybody for coming today and I hope you enjoy the performances. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Layla and we are the Civic Projects team um, at the Serpentine Galleries. A lot of you will know our faces now that we've worked with you all for like the last three years or so. Um, we just wanted to say again thank you to all of our collaborators who have put so much trust in these projects and really embrace working with each artist and yeah just giving you know so much time and love to um, the processes that we've created together um, and yeah my amazing colleagues Lizzie and Amal have been um, yeah, working on this project for longer than me, actually. <laughs> but um, it's been such a privilege to work in this borough and, um, yeah, create these amazing films. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just a really beautiful moment to be able to share everything with you guys. And I hope you enjoy the performances. Um, and the artists and all of the participants. Oh, my name's Amal, uh, and we said after Wednesday that we wouldn't make everybody do lots of speeches, <laughs> but we just thought that we're here at Barking Town Hall, and it would be really nice to share with you all. You can see the films, you can see some of the work that comes alongside the films, um, both here and at the Serpentine. But actually, this project is so much more than what you guys get to see in the films and we couldn't share everything with you because a lot of it is just about the relationships, the friendships, the trust that we've been building together and we've done it in lots of different ways. So we really wanted to invite the artists and some of their collaborators to just share a few things about what the project, how the projects came to be. Uh, so I'd love to call on Sonia and maybe Amelia or Sarah to, to say a few words about Yes, I Hear You. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't have a speech prepared, so, um, but my name is Sonia Boyce, and I'm an artist, and I actually do have a very long-standing relationship with Barking 
and Dagenham in terms of my, my sister and her family uh, live just by Loxford Park. So I've been coming to parking for a very long time. And I'm from East London, so anyway. Um, I'm amazed by how so many people who are here. I mean, this is really fantastic. Um, so yeah, I ma I made, I've made a film called Yes, I Hear You, and I suppose really the project began during a tour of the site, and we came to the council buildings, and we went to a variety of sites in and around um, Barking, the Barking Museum, I think, might have been one of the, on the little tour, where I got to speak to Councillor Ashraf, um, and uh, she's amazing. I, as a deputy, uh, the deputy um, councillor for, deputy leader for Barking Dagenham, and she started to talk about, um, right off the bat, how she had, uh, she was being part of the domestic abuse commission that was being um, instigated by the borough. Uh, and I mean, just doing that in itself, I thought was really uh, amazing. And through talking with her, and I hadn't yet decided what it, what it was that I might do uh, for the for the project, um, she kind of convinced me in a really gentle way that actually the subject of domestic abuse and domestic violence was something that really needed to be we needed to shine a light on. So it was out of that conversation coming to Barking, uh, and her you know a, a cup of tea and some biscuits, just a gentle conversation about why this was really important to, to kind of think about. And in the process, and we have to, I have to say that, the, that we began the project just before uh, the COVID pandemic began. And m much of it, I, I was, uh, Sarah, who's I think part of the choir, um, Sarah Boozy, who works for PAUSE, um, who uh, came involved, became involved in the project. I've only just met her like, 10 minutes ago, because everything was done via Zoom um, until until we were able to find a safe way in order to make uh, make a film. But what I will say is that it's involved a l people who've been incredibly brave, not only as survivors, perpetrators, but also those who give social care to uh, you know to give to, to to trust me actually with their stories with their experiences to kind of find a way to hold what they, what they um, have experienced, their knowledge, um, so that everybody else can hopefully benefit from it. Um, Amelia was one of the people that has been involved in many of the processes that we've been involved with, and hopefully, hopefully she can say something about, about that. Yeah, hopefully I can say something. I wasn't expecting to speak today at all, but um, I was the uh, community engagement officer for the Domestic Abuse Commission, which I'd done for about 12 months when it started a few years ago. And I came in basically to work, well, to be the, I guess, the person speaking to the community about a really tough conversation around domestic abuse. So I spoke with social workers, police, survivors, perpetrators, as many people that I could talk to as possible. And it was about really, I guess, people trusting me with that information and trusting me with that insight. So firstly, thank you to Barkin and Dagenham for trusting me and then feeding back to the commission. And then that kind of linked into the work that the Serpentine was doing as well, which at the time I kind of agreed to it. I didn't really know what it was going to be, but I was like, ooh, being an art gallery, okay, I'll do that. Um, and I joined the process, and again, um, I didn't know what it was going to be, but the process in itself was just really beautiful that the first session that we had was, I guess, us as performers and as creatives just building a safe space. We like bonded through our favorite music and we spoke about things, but we really kind of easily opened up to each other because we kind of knew what the cause was for, how important it was, and we just started to really open up. I didn't think I'd open up to strangers like that, but also then the, what I learned from survivors and learned from people in the borough. And then we went on to create the film, and um, I had to get over looking at myself on the big screen, like smiling awkwardly, but behind that, there's a beautiful message in it. And if you haven't seen Yes, I Hear You, please go and watch it, because it's, it's beautifully done. So again, thank you so much, Sonia, for creating something like that. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna stop talking now, so thank you.
Um, next, I'd like to invite Helen Kamuk and Sarah to speak. I think George has just gone out for a sec. Um, yes, thank you all for coming. I, I think when we walked in, we didn't expect to see so many people. So, <laughs> um, so I think I remember maybe in 2017 sitting in a cafe with Amal and talking about radio ballads, the idea of radio ballads, the idea of normal, everyday people having their voices on Radio 4, which in the 1950s and 60s was unheard of. Um, and these radio ballads... I knew about them, I found them really interesting, and we sat down and had completely shocked that we both thought they were brilliant and significant and really important. So we've each done quite different radio ballads, and we've approached it in different ways, um, but each of us, it feels like, have been really embedded and having conversations with people um, over a period of three years. Um, so just pre-pandemic, then pandemic, then post-pandemic, we're not really post, but you know what I mean. Um, and I, um, I have worked with uh, people who offer care and people who receive care together in conversation. The idea of the dialogue, the building of relationship, to talk about what care actually means. Um, what it feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like. We've done poetry, uh, we're singing, we're going to sing for you today. Um, we've done drawing, um, we've done movement work, um, thinking about gestures and how to communicate. So I think one of the things that we were looking at was how to talk about our experiences using different registers or different kinds of languages. Um, I guess people who sing, rap, dance, uh, tag, graffiti, there, there are so many different languages that we have at our fingertips. Um, and so this project for me was about finding different ways. Um, so there's a film uh, that we are all in singing. Um, so some of our rehearsals are in that. There's a choir, a wonderful choir, Enjoy Choir, who come up from Brighton. They're singing, what do you like to be called? Vocal coach, I'm going to call you for, for now. Um, who have come to support the process, so who've been learning a song alongside us over a period of between ten and eight to ten weeks. Um, the song that we're going to sing to you comes out of uh, a process of conversations that were about what it means to care, to receive care, to lose care, to feel in grief, to look for places and spaces of hope. Um, and so all the words that came out of those workshops, sometimes it was poetry sessions, sometimes we did uh, a song lyric session, sometimes it was me just taking and remembering conversations that have happened. Um, and I wrote a song that we're gonna perform to you um, this morning um, that came out of those sessions. So yes, please have a look at the film. Um, the wonderful work workers at Pause are talking about what care means to them and the women that they support and work with are in the film. They are singing, they are showing their faces, their lives, the spaces they inhabit, and they're talking about what music means to them. So, um, yes, please, please go and have a look at the film. And I'm going to hand over now to Pause to say something. Um, my name is Sue Cade. I'm the practice lead uh, for Pause in Barking and Dagenham. We sit within children's social care. This is I'm Sarah Pearcy. I also work in Pause. Um, and I think, yeah, we didn't realise, did we, when we were having those mm. Zoom meetings with um, Amal and Leila and Lizzie and Sonia to begin with, and, and then Helen, quite what we were letting ourselves in for and mm. what it would um, actually become, which having seen the film now, having performed with the choir, having looked at Helen's book, um, seen the photographs, um, it's something really, really beautiful. But I think more beautiful than that even was, was the process and, mm. and the times that we've spent together actually producing all of that, and it's been completely amazing. And I think that we wanted to get involved in this because we thought access to arts and culture, you know, we need more of that. People in Barking and Dagenham need that. Our women deserve that. Our women have a right to access arts and culture. But we didn't just access it, actually. Uh, we were participants and collaborators. And I can't even tell you how much of a privilege um, that was. So thank you. I'm getting very emotional. Thank you to Lizzie and uh, Layla and Amal and to Helen and Becky for making that process so wonderful. And thank you, Katie, for making us making our voices shine um, and I think that's the thing um, for the women that we work with 
Um, I hope they now know, and I hope what this process gave to them was to realise that their voices are important and valued and beautiful, mm. really, really beautiful. Um, hey everyone, I'm Lizzie. Uh, I was wondering if Rory, where are you? If Rory, sorry to do it to you again, um, would want to come and speak and a little bit later you'll see Rory perform with Caden and Caden will speak on behalf of his experience in video ID, but it's just Rory. Hello everyone, um, I'm Rory. Uh, it's, yeah, it's lovely to see so many people and be part in a room with everyone who's been involved with these radio ballads. Um, I had a huge privilege to work with eight incredible people, um, which then grew into, I think there's about 60 people involved in our project in the end. Um, but it started off with a wonderful group um, from Green Shoes Arts, an organization which provides different um, creative workshops, writing, poetry, songwriting, drama, uh, to come together and um, work through whatever's going on our li in our lives through art. And I think what's happened with this project in the end, it is very much about a film we've made about art and about imagination and what that what that gives us as a tool. And at the very beginning of, uh, of, of to start it off, to, use, to, to create a sort of symbol to anchor our discussion or our journey was this symbol of the raft. And to think about a symbol of support, a symbol which is also quite precarious, but still keeps us afloat and takes us somewhere. We might not know where, but it does take us somewhere. So over two years, we had workshops, first six in person, and then nearly a year online, um, where we talked about what this symbol of the raft meant to us in our lives, about recovery, about dreams, and all through, um, and then the film is, is is a manifestation of that, bringing together the poetry, the, the artwork. Um, I had the great privilege of working with BDYD. We worked together for, t for, a, for, for, a, for, for a workshop, thinking about how support manifests in our bodies through technology as well. And we created two music videos together. And the, the work is structured around a concert of seven songs, which also sub, um, reflect on this notion of a raft in different ways. And I had the great privilege of working with uh, Robin Haddon, a, a, a singer from Sheffield, um, a singer from Idaho, Declan Rowe John. When you look at, when you start and watching the film, you might feel a bit confused because it starts in Idaho, far, far away from Barking and Dagenham. But for me, it was very important also that often in my work, if I've come to a place, I think it's also good to look beyond it as well and, and a way of looking at a space from another place. So um, as part of our journey, a group from um, a, a rehabilitation group for, for, from a place called the Interfaith Homeless Shelter uh, joined us, a group I'd been previously working with, and we had a year almost of exchange by Zoom. And then the third singer is the incredible, incredible Caden Fearden. Who I had such, I, I, I had a, a song sort of half uh, cooked or whatever, but a song is never complete until you work with someone. And, and um, we worked on this song together called Flowers. And Caden brought so much to this song with lyrics and their whole being. So thank you so much, Caden. Um, so yeah, th thank you for everyone involved. The film is on. It's an hour and six minutes long, <laughs> so it's quite long. Um, but 
Thank you so much, Amal, Lizzie and Leila also for this great privilege to work on such a project and be so well supported these last two and a half years. Yvonne, I know you're going to join us too. It's so nice to see this room so full of so many people. Um, and um, the Body Blow uh, was made uh, through long-term collaboration uh, with uh, people with lived experience of asbestos exposure, many of whom are in the room, the ones that can be with us um, during the project. Um, some of the people that we were working with passed away, and the film really is in remembrance of them as much as the people that are with us here today. Um, I've known Barking most of my life, and I, I haven't... I haven't shouted about that in the project because I didn't grow up here, but it's a place that means a lot to me. My dad worked here <laughs> for many, many, many years, so I, I kind of know it as a place, and I know how overlooked it can be as a borough, and it was an important project for me um, to get right. And I've, I've known about the history of asbestos in Barking and its industrial history that kind of underlies it as a place. It's kind of knotted into it as a... Um, but what I wasn't aware of when I started this project was how it's, a, it's still with us today. It's still something current that's happening today. So Barking has the highest levels of uh, asbestos-related cancer uh, in the whole of London. Um, and the peak hasn't been reached. The peak was meant to be in 2020. Um, we didn't reach that peak because of COVID, and that's significant as well because those things are entangled. And for me, it highlights you know, who matters, whose, whose bodies are valued, and how are they valued. So the work really looks at who's allowed to be exposed to risk, who's allowed to take a risk, who takes a risk with our bodies. And that's something that we um, kind of w explored as a group. So I brought together a group of primarily women, actually, who, who work in different services that connect uh, to um, people who suffer from asbestos-related cancers. So whether they were legal professionals, social workers, end-of-life carers, or uh, amazing charities like LASAG, um, we thought about those languages of risk and care and how they're embedded in, in, um, in ideas of support. Um, and I'm just so grateful for not only the truck, because trust is a word that's come up a lot in what people have said today, but also this kind of unflinching kind of openness um, that um, I was kind of met with, with uh, the people that I work with and just how generous um, people have been throughout the project with their stories. Um, we were working during, as everyone was, during an incredibly difficult time during the pandemic. And there were many people that I've, I've never been able to meet um, because they're not comfortable uh, with, um, yet because of COVID, with, with meeting in large groups of people. And so we had to find other ways to work together on the phone, um, other ways to connect. Um, and I think there was a real misconception that everyone had uh, ways to connect on the internet, on, on WhatsApp, but a lot of the people I work with didn't have that. So we had to think about using landlines. We had to think about other ways to collaborate. And I just, um, I'm just so grateful for how generous everyone was in that. Um, but I really want to pass over to <laughs> Yvonne, who, who I know you're, you, do, you hate public speaking, but you're an amazing public speaker. But I met Yvonne in March 2020. And I could just tell from that first encounter that you were willing to go on this kind of journey, this slightly unknown journey with me. Um, and you've, yeah, you've supported me as much as, as anything else in this project. And I'm, yeah, I just, can you say a few words about LASAG and what LASAG do? Because they're so central to Barking and it would be, yeah, I just, yeah, 
I'll pass to you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> um, my name's Yvonne. I'm 33 years in the health service, so far removed from this. <laughs> um, my speaking would be with groups, groups of patients, groups of people who are affected. So most of my career was with respiratory oncology, coming across people with asbestos disease and how it affected them. So that's what I've done for most of my working career, and it's mostly been in Barking and Dagenham, surprisingly. Um, so yes, I feel you know, quite connected to this area. Uh, 33 years health service, and then I retired. So with that, I was approached to help set up the charity called LASAG, London Asbestos Support and Awareness Group because there was a big gap in supporting these people. So although we did lots of work within the health service, there was still a lot of support needed. And a colleague in Kent and myself set up this support group to cover Essex and Kent, which is still ongoing. And I'm now retired from LASAG after five years, but still keep in touch. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to let go, but... Um, Yes, and Alona approached us about the filming, really, with the group. And I think the plan was slightly different from how it happened. Is that yeah. right to say? Um, so um, COVID affected, really, how it was all going to happen. And I think maybe myself and some of my colleagues, we had to maybe do more than what we thought we were going to, <laughs> to do. Um, but I have to say, the, I have enjoyed it, and the team I have been amazing, Alona and the team, and how they've put together this film, which obviously is very sensitive and hard-hitting. And we still need that hard-hitting because asbestos is still with us. And as Alona's already said, we have lost some of those people. So we're here today, really, to say how privileged we are to have worked with all of them. But definitely the film is amazing, the whole team been incredible. So, yeah, well, um, very emotional. So much gratitude for everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so overwhelmed by how, how amazing everyone is and all of the artists. And no, no, I'm just really I'm so, so incredibly proud of everybody here that have been part of making these amazing works for the artists who've really taught us that we can have love in our work every day. <laughs> and um, as Helen very eloquently said earlier, this project is named Radio Ballads because we're upset. I was pretty obsessed with this idea that um, there can be ways in art and media and culture to center the voices of people with lived experience of the things we're talking about. So, mu so much, I, I see so much in the art world and on TV and in all forms of media, people speaking on behalf of others. And so I really feel what's happened with these four radio ballads is that we've had the voices of so many people mm -hmm. um, present. And part of radio, the original radio ballads was a combination of testimony, voice, and song. And so we're really excited to be able to present some song today. Um, yeah. yeah. Hello everyone. Oh, <clears throat> hello everyone. Um, it's nice to see everyone that's here, supporting the energy. It's just really good here. Um, yeah, just the song that we made was amazing. This is called Flowers. It was, well, do you want to tell the story? Or should I tell the story? Oh, so basically, it's about a little situation relationship type of thing and you know it's just going through heartbreak and all that and i was like okay let me just fix it up a little piece so yeah i just because i also songwrite as well so i was like okay let me just make it nice and soothing and just oh so 
get ready to cry. I'm joking, no. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really good to work with you guys. Thank you, Layla, Daisy. Love you guys. So yeah, thank you guys. You bring me your flowers I'll keep them safe for you Just bring me your flowers I'll keep them safe like you Safe like you thousand flowers there are ten thousand flowers for you so just bring me your flowers so just bring me your flowers for you bring me your flowers I'll keep them safe like you so just bring me your flowers bring me your flowers for you to grow for you
<laughs> we're all very nervous. <laughs> so, um, and we're about to perform this in public for the second time. This is a much more intimate um, space than we had on Wednesday. So be kind to us. Smile, please. <laughs> Smile back. <laughs> um, but as Helen said, this is um, a song that came out of all of the lovely sessions that we were doing and the words. And, and I think... Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful because we were held with such care and compassion by, by Helen and Becky and, and Amal and Layla and that. So that's what I think has come out in this, in this song. Um, and personally, I think like the women that took part in it, I don't think I've ever experienced in my working career the level of bravery, mm -hmm. authenticity and creativity that these women um, just showed us. So this is our song. <laughs> <laughs> To understand touch, we must remember how it feels to breathe. Without a breath, the lungs don't move. Without movement, our systems close down. To reach is to activate movement. To reach inside the body is to activate movement. This space enables us to exist or survive. If an event of extreme or even non-extreme distress happens, we might be left without sound. We might be left in vacuumed silence, not with the calm of quiet, but with the vibration of silence. Vibrations felt through the impulses and agitations of a silent hum. This hum does exist. You know it if you've heard it. You will know it if you take time to listen. It is one thing to be alone. It is another to feel alone. If I could show you what I mean, I would. If I could tell you what I mean, I would. It is one thing to speak, it is another to move. I'm listening in your silence, I'm listening in your silence. And you say you don't feel like it, and you say you can't feel it anymore, and you say you can't feel like it, and that you're quite different from before. There is courage in reaching towards a sound, in someone else or inside yourself. Make no mistake, there is bravery in sound. Cause there's something about you I'm listening in your silence I'm listening in your silence I sing, I sleep, I feel the rain Sometimes it doesn't come again I hurt, I cry, I rise And around me always skies I breathe, I breathe I sing, I seep, I feel the rain Sometimes it doesn't come again I hurt, I cry, I rise And around me always skies I breathe, I breathe And you say you don't feel like it And you say you don't feel Yo 
you're quite different from before, before, before. Cause there's something about you, I'm listening in your silence, I'm listening in your silence, I sing, I sleep, I feel the rain. Sometimes it doesn't come again I hurt, I cry, I rise And around me always skies I breathe, I breathe And you say you don't feel like it And you say you don't feel it anymore And you say you can't feel like it and that you're quite different from before. And you say you don't feel like it before. And you say you don't feel it before. And you say you're quite different from before. And you say you don't feel like it. And you say you don't feel it anymore. And you say you can't feel like it. You're quite different from before, before, before. Cause there's something about you, we're listening in your silence, we're listening in your silence. You sing, you sing, you feel the rain, sometimes it doesn't come again. You heard, you cry, you rise, and around you always skies. Breathe, breathe, breathe. My question remained unanswered, unsettled, wobbly, thirsty. I level myself an inside-out landing, a constellation of stars. I change where I'm stood. <laughs>